What's up Stitches? My name is Michael and welcome to or back to my YouTube channel. Today is episode two of the Smichael Goes and Teen podcast. It's been about a month since I last sat down and just kind of chatted with you guys about my projects so that's what I'm going to do today. Also I will have some announcements at the end so do stick around for those. I'm going to talk about some whips, some work in progresses, some finished objects that I've done, what I'm doing in the future and what I'm wearing. So without further ado, let's get into the video. I'm drinking some peppermint tea. Um, I love a bit of peppermint tea. And also it's in this really cute cup that my friend got me for my birthday a while ago. And um, she no longer lives in the same country as me. And so whenever I drink from this cup, it's like she's here with me. And that makes me very happy. So first I'm going to talk about some of my whips. So the first whip I want to talk about is a mitered square blanket. There's no real pattern that I follow for this but I kind of call it my Tetris blanket because all of the squares are based on one of the shapes. I almost put my blanket in my tea. <laughs> um, all of the squares are arranged into the shape of one of the Tetris squares. Um, it's basically a project that I'm doing to make sure that I use up my scrap yarn, my acrylic yarn that I'm not really going to use to make any garments out of. So just nice to have a nice little blanket. The yarn that I am using, like I said, is scrap. However, it's mostly Aran yarn with some DK thrown in there. Um, the black is DK as well. Um, most of it is from Audi. I think the brand is like so craftsy or something. I personally wouldn't recommend it. I've got a lot of it because my family just kind of buy it for me and hand it to me. Um, but I would not recommend you buy it. I would recommend you buy something a bit nicer than Audi yarn. But yeah, so generally I don't have like a pattern or structure to follow. It's just your basic mitered squares and then I just kind of pick whatever colour I want to do next. I think I'm going to keep it at like kind of this width. So it's like a nice personal blanket. Um, and then just keep going forever I guess. I guess it's going to be a work in progress for a long time. I started it initially when lockdown started in the UK back in March and I wanted to finish it by the time lockdown had ended. Um, that obviously didn't happen and if any of you watched any of my Twitch live streams then you will have seen me working on this blanket. Um, it's very fun to work on, it's just blankets take forever and so they're quite demotivating after a while because you feel like obviously you're getting somewhere but it's taking forever and there are other projects you can do like socks that are a lot quicker so it's going to be a whip for a long time. I'll probably give you guys updates on how it's going in every podcast. Hopefully I'll work on it a bit more so it's not a boring update of I haven't knit on it yet. <laughs> But that's um, my first work in progress. My second work in progress is the September sweater by Petite Knit. Um, this yarn, I can't actually tell you where this yarn is from. Um, not that I'm not allowed to, I definitely could if I wanted to. Um, basically, my mother brought a jumper from either Tesco or Sainsbury's. It was just a, a kind of retail jumper. And the yarn kept like pulling and misshaping um, and she didn't like how it was looking so she ended up giving it to me and said feel free to unravel it all and use it for yarn. And so I did that and I've got these nice little skeins of yarn or nice little cakes even, um, wound them by hand. And so I wanted to knit a brioche sweater with it and I think it looks quite nice. Um, I One thing I will say about the September sweater is I recognise that it is translated from Danish into English. Um, but it's a bit confusing and I don't really like the way the actual pattern is set out and described and I personally 
wouldn't recommend this pattern because it does only go up to a 3x so it's not fully size inclusive and yeah generally it's been a lot to try and understand luckily I have understood a lot of it after a lot of googling and frustration but yeah I'm I'm excited for how it turned out I I I bought the pattern so I'm going to knit it now. I've, this is all the body that is done. Um, I don't know if I want to make it cropped and then kind of finish it where it is. It's quite short. Um, and then have it like a cropped sweater. Uh, because generally if I wear clothes they're either cropped or tucked in. And I don't really like top tucking in jumpers. So I probably will end up making this a cropped jumper. Do the sleeves and then... I don't know whether to like extend the neck because like, it has a, a small um, ribbed section around the neck but I think I might extend that and make it more of a rolled neck design to make it even more cosy but yeah that's the September sweater I in future I think I like the look of the the Osprey sweater um i don't know which designer it is i'll probably put that up on the screen now but the osprey pullover um is brioche and hopefully better to understand than this pattern another thing i will add as well which made it even more confusing is all over the pattern it says go to my website and you'll be able to see videos of me doing the things but it's all in Danish and there's no English subtitles so I didn't really understand obviously I can see what's going on but I have to kind of deduce what's going on from the angle of the camera and just how everything looks so I might not even be doing this right now there are a few issues with the way I've done it this is the first time I've ever knit brioche but it's nice I like it I like brioche it's a very fun pattern now the third whip that I'm working on. I think I only have three whips which is quite an achievement for me really. Um, generally I have at least five so I'm down to three which is very impressive and I'm hoping I can finish this whip that I've got in my hands now by the end of the week so then I'll be down to two but then I'll probably be starting <laughs> some more whips this week so I'll go back up again. But this um, you probably won't recognise what it's going to be but it's going to be the Vivian Halter. This yarn is Aran yarn, a worsted weight yarn. It is by Mariners. It's the Mariners Aran yarn in the colour pesto. Um, I have a lot of this pesto coloured yarn because for my birthday my brother wanted to buy me some yarn and he ended up buying four 400 gram <laughs> balls of yarn so I have a lot of it but it's a very lovely colour so I'm not too upset about it. I did originally start knitting the Vivian Halter like as soon as Ponder and Ply released it but um, I found that I, I, I knit it in a size large and I found that I didn't like the way it fit I felt like it had far too much negative ease than what I wanted so instead of sizing up I just changed from 3.25 to 4 millimeter needles um, and it seems a lot better I've also made some modifications to make it slightly longer so it covers me a bit more so I can just like wear it with some high-waisted jeans and not have too much midriff showing off um, but yeah I'm very excited for it I'm basically done with the stockinette portion and now it's coming up to the kind of bust portion with the little eyelets cut out and the neck piece so that should knit up very quickly and I should finish that by the end of this week which is exciting I also this is going to be one of my project vlogs so you'll get to hear a lot more about the Vivian Halter in that video so subscribe if you want to see more of that <laughs> So those are all my whips for the time being. There will be more this week because I know myself and I cast on projects all the time and I don't finish them a lot of the time like the Tetris blanket. But now I'm going to show you guys some yarn that I bought. I am someone who I've never knit with fingering weight yarn. I've only ever used store-bought 
generally acrylic or like acrylic and a small amount of wool and so I wanted to treat myself um, I managed to get myself a bit of a part-time job recently so it was a nice little pat on the back to me go buy yourself some nice yarn so I went to my local yarn shop which I had no idea was anywhere nearby it was in a very discreet location I didn't know it was there until someone told me about it but I bought my first skein of hand dyed yarn you can't really see it in this so I'll do some close ups my camera just cut out um, so it is Irish artisan yarn it is four ply, 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon. There is 100 grams here, so it's about 400 meters hand dyed, and I am obsessed. I am so ridiculously obsessed. This cost me 18 pounds, which um, everyone around me who doesn't knit says that that's a lot <laughs> of money, but for the quality of this, I am so happy to pay that. I think I need to go buy another skein because I have decided what I'm going to use it for and that's going to be the Cozy Classic Light by Jessie May Designs. I'm very excited to make that. I think I bought the pattern as soon as it was released without any yarn to uh, knit it with. I just knew I needed that pattern and uh, this is gonna be it. I love the little speckles, the big the big section of purple, the big section of blue. I just love it so much. And I'm someone who, <laughs> as you can tell, I wear a lot of black. A lot of my clothing is black or like dark navy. And so having something that's light and bright is something that can add a little something to my wardrobe without having to buy a whole new wardrobe. Now that I bought hand dye yarn, I can see the appeal. Um, before I always, you know, I haven't been in a financial position where I can spend quite a lot of money on one project. So now it's, yeah, I, I can tell this is going to be a problem in my life. <laughs> I can tell that I'm going to be buying a lot of hand dyed yarn. I've also considered dyeing it myself. I know a few people who spin their own yarn and that's something I want to do, but I, I, I just can't have too many things on at once because I will get so overwhelmed because I enjoy everything to do with knitting um, so I need to limit myself but it kind of makes me want to dye my own yarn um, and the inspirations that people use to dye their yarn is really cool and I've always had this, I say always, since I was really involved in the yarn and knitting community I had this idea of dyeing yarn based on album covers of bands that impacted and influenced my life quite a lot. Growing up I was massively into loads of different types of music but mostly the kind of punk rock, pop punk, metal, that sort of area of music and so I would love to dye different skeins based on those band, some of my favourite albums and then create that because I think it'd be really pretty and really cool. So who knows, maybe maybe in the future Smichael, Smichael Goes Yarn Dying will be a thing. Um, but yeah, I, I, I love this. I love this so much and I want to stare at it all the time. Like all the time. Um, and I need to buy more. Which I'm very excited about. I just need to make sure that when I go in, the, <laughs> the people who work there are very, very good. And they, they kind of say, look, if you tell us you need one thing and one thing alone, we will not let you buy anything more. So I might just have to go in and be like, okay, I just need one more skein of these and nothing else. And hope that we both are consistent and good to me. <laughs> now on to some finished objects. So the first one I want to talk about, I don't actually have it with me because it's now gone to its rightful home, is the bear I was in progress of knitting last podcast. Um, I'll insert some pictures here of what the bear looks like. It's very cute, I'm very happy with it, how it turned out and that actually inspired me to knit more stuffed plushy type things before I was very much 
a garment knitter through and through, I wouldn't touch anything else. But now it's inspired something. So the first I'm going to talk about is this little bee. If you follow me on TikTok, you already would have seen it. Um, I didn't follow a pattern <laughs> for this little guy. Um, he's a bit wonky, but I just kind of knit in the round. I started off with um, a small number of stitches, increased it to the point where we got to here. And then I alternated between yellow and black yarn and then decreased again using slip slip knit and knit two together. Added some wings, which I think I started off with like two, increased either side and then decreased again to make the little wing shape. Um, made two of those, stitched at the top, stitched in a little face and there we go. This basically was inspired by those crocheted TikTok bees um, that I was seeing everywhere and they had giant ones. And I just wanted to try it out just to see if you can knit a bee and uh, you can. <laughs> so that was the first little plushy thing I made. Um, it sits on my desk when I'm working and just smiles at me to remind me to have a good day. So the next ones I'm very excited to show you, you're going to be seeing a lot of them. Um, because I'm going to be knitting a lot of them. So using the acrylic yarn that I made, that I showed you in my last podcast, I made a little Among Us crewmate. <laughs> How cute! Um, I will be releasing further videos all about this little guy. Um, because I want to knit a life-size version. And I did a live stream the other day um, of me finishing off another one, which I'll show you in a second. Um, but yeah, so this was done. I knit the two legs separately and then knit in the round up to here where I then decreased. I then knit a kind of, I don't know how to describe it. You know when you're in primary school and you have a sheet of paper and you cut out um, a little, shape so that you end up with a cube when you stick it all together. I basically did that but with knitting so I basically knit little cubey bits, sewed it together and then sewed it onto the back. The front I kind of knit this um, blue visor, sewed it on and then went around the stitching with some black yarn so it has the little black circle around it. Very simple, very quick. I am very happy with this little guy. I'm even happier. This guy's not finished, so technically it's a whip, but it's kind of finished enough for me to show you. This guy! <laughs> this is what I was knitting on my live stream. So they're slowly getting bigger to the point where <laughs> I'm gonna knit one that's life-sized. I'm very excited for that. That's gonna be coming up in a couple of weeks. Again, I did the same thing, so all I need to do now is like weave in the end here and then go around this visor bit in black so that you've got the black bit around the visor. This one, so both of these were used using DK yarn. Um, this was held single using a four millimeter needle and this was held triple using a 6.5 millimeter needle. Um, and I'm very happy with the result of this. It's quite chunky, quite nice. Um, I'm running out of stuffing, so I'm gonna have to buy some more. But yeah, I'm loving the plushie hype at the moment. I never thought I would. I thought I was a garment knitter through and through, but I guess I'm converted. I'm gonna try and see. <laughs> I have this goal of knitting a crewmate in every color, at least at this size and then doing like a stop motion video of um, basically me and my friends arguing when playing Among Us because that's all we do. We are we were like, oh yeah, let's play Among Us together. And then we spend the entire time just arguing with each other, which I imagine, you know, it's what a lot of people do. But yeah, I love the game. So I decided to make some crewmates. I do want to learn how, I, I do want to kind of create the hats as well. So I usually, I have like the little guy sat on top of my head as my hat. Some people have the fried egg. I know one of my friends loves the plunger. That's her favorite hat. 
So yeah, I'm gonna see if I can knit them some hats as well and see if I can attach them somehow either permanently or I can like switch out the hats, that'll be fun. So those are my first few finished objects. Um, secondly, we have the ripple butt shorts that I showed you in my last video. I did block them um, and they don't seem to have got the shape that they were supposed to have. They look great when they're on. Um, if you want to see how they look like when they're on, then check out my last video. I'll link it up here <laughs> for you to go click on and watch how I constructed it, how I modified it, what I thought of the pattern, and then obviously what it looks like when I wear it. As you can see, it's incredibly stretchy. I love it. I love these shorts. And like I said, these are sleeping shorts, so you probably won't see too much more of them because I'll just sleep in them. <laughs> so that's my second finished object. And is this the last one? This is the last one. You've already just seen it because I lifted it up very high. But it's my Harry Styles cardigan! <laughs> I've been talking about this non-stop since I finished it. I've got two videos showing how I constructed the cardigan. But it is amazing. I love it so much. If you want to see more about it, obviously do go check out the videos. Um, I am very happy with it, obviously. Um, I'm in love with it, I wear it all the time. Um, I took it to my friends the other day and they um, wanted to keep it and I had to aggressively pull it away from them because otherwise they would have kept it um, because it's amazing. I want to add pockets and I'm not sure. Tell me what you guys think. I want to add pockets um, either side of the front and I don't know whether to do it in the colours of the squares it's going to be on. So it's going to be on kind of these four squares. So yellow, black, green, and then the jacquard. I don't know whether to do like those four colours, um, like the corners, so it kind of matches in, or if I go all out and have this blue, which I've still got loads left of, um, and just make two big squares and then sew it to the cardigan so then it's got like a little a little more like pop of blue because you only have the blue on the kind of button bands I ended up not putting buttons on because I really one couldn't be bothered and two just kind of didn't want to because I know I d I'm not going to button it up ever so yeah let me know what you think do, should I do it in the colours or should I do it in blue I'm thinking I might do the pockets in blue but yeah this is this is my favourite thing to wear at the moment. Um, I was going to be wearing it whilst doing the podcast, but I recognise that in the previous couple of videos, and probably in coming videos, I'm going to be wearing it. So I didn't want to overload you guys with this card again. <laughs> but yeah, it was very good. Um, I explained all of the yarn I did, the pattern and everything. I explained all of that in my other video, so do check that out if you want to see more about this card again. I will also link all of the patterns to the knitted pieces and works in progresses and everything down below. So that's it for my finished objects and now I'm going to talk about what is going to be coming up. So obviously uh, we spoke about the Vivian Halter, that's going to be a project vlog that I'm going to be putting out very soon and very exciting. I'm going to be knitting a life-size crewmate. I won't tell you how big it has to be, but watch this space because I'm pretty sure it's a very similar height to me. <laughs> so, so that will be coming soon. Um, I also am in the works of figuring out how to knit the Taylor Swift folklore cardigan so that's something I'm going to be doing very soon as well I just need to order the different yarn for it and also work out how to do each of the cabling so that it all kind of matches up to my size and everything so that's something I'm going to be doing if you guys have any suggestions of any celebrity looks you want me to recreate or any 
different plushies you want me to make. I'm very big on the plushie hype at the moment, so I'd be happy to do that. Let me know in the comments down below and I will see if I can do that for you. So the announcement, my Ariana Grande dress, which I will now tell you is named the God is a Knitter dress. One of my lovely friends came up with the name and everyone seemed to love it. So that's what we're going for. That's the name. God is a knit dress. That is now in testing. So if you are interested in testing it, there's still a few sizes left that need testing. So if you're interested, do message me on Instagram at smichaelgoesknitting or here, comment on the video. Just let me know and I can see what I can do. Obviously I'm very proud of the design and I'll be setting up my Etsy shop to start selling it once it's gone through the whole testing and tech editing stage. So that'll be hopefully coming out before the end of the year, which is very exciting. I also have a few designs in my brain that I'm trying to get down onto paper and then to knit. So hopefully if not before the end of this year, early next year, I'm gonna have a few more designs out. And just to talk about what I'm wearing right now, I think I've worn it in videos previously, but this is the Easy Teasy. It was designed by someone called Alison Cribs or Cribbit Cribbit on Instagram. She was very lovely. Um, I love this top. It's got nice little eyelets on it, so it's like, it's nice and warm, but it's also quite breezy, so you can wear it in the summer, and I, I kind of autumnish now so it's nice to wear now it's very comfortable and very stylish so I will link that down below as well as I mentioned before I have now got myself a part-time job so I can spend more money on yarn <laughs> I'm totally kidding um yeah I've, I've now got some more structure to my days and hopefully this will keep me regular and consistent in my upload schedule because then I can schedule my days. I'm always someone who's been very organised and I like to organise everything I do around a school schedule or something like that so having this, these part-time hours that are non-movable will be very good for me and it will give me structure to my days that I have been waiting for for a few months now so hopefully everything is going to stay the same if not be even more consistent um i will be posting every wednesday on youtube like i have been and hopefully my instagram will be a bit more lively than it has been i post in my stories quite a lot but actual posts is lacking i'm thinking i'm only gonna do one of these podcasts a month because otherwise it's it will be a lot of kind of oh I've still got this thing that I've only knit a few rows on since last week and all of that so I'm going to try and do it monthly to make sure that I'm not boring you guys with all of my projects and that means you can kind of see from month to month which projects are work in progress and then finish objects and everything like that so hopefully you guys are happy with that. If you like this video and you like podcasts then do give me a like that lets me know that you guys are enjoying me just talking to a camera for ages and subscribe if you are excited to see the Folklore Cardigan or the Vivian Halter or the Life Size Among Us crewmate with the different hats. Um, that's what's coming up for you guys, you lucky lucky people. So yeah, thank you for hanging out with me today and I will see you around. Stay wholesome and happy knitting.